How do you register for VAT? Not what is VAT, not do I need to register for VAT? Should I choose to register for VAT? Those are different questions. This is how do you actually register for VAT? I want to thank Apu for putting a comment under a previous VAT video asking me to explain how to register for VAT. Now I hadn't done this because I thought this was answered a thousand times online and when I googled it several pages and several videos came up saying how to register for VAT and when I clicked on them they don't say. I mean they say go online to do it but mostly they give you a general overview of what VAT is and why you need to register for VAT and then just say go online to register for VAT which doesn't really answer the question so let's see if we can answer the question. Hi I'm Benedict, I'm a Chartered Accountant. Okay, the parts to this process, roughly what I'll be going through with you, is getting logged on to HMRC's website, getting through the various filters to get to the proper application stage, doing the application, and then afterwards a little bit about charging VAT. It's not going to be comprehensive about anything except the application process. Before you start, there are things you'll need to know because you'll need to fill them in in the forms. And rather than getting halfway through an application and then realizing you need to go and gather some information, I'll read you the list of everything I think you need to know. There will be some things, a couple of things, that you only need if you're doing sole trading, self-employment, and you won't need as a company. There are lots of things you'll only need the information for if you're a company, you won't need if you're a sole trader. But it'll be obvious, if I'm asking for director's details, well that's a company, you, you don't have a director if you're a sole trader. So I'm going to read the list off my computer so that I get everything that I've written down. Okay, information needed. Government Gateway user ID and password. We'll talk about that when we're logging into the system. The type of body you are, sole trader or company are the main two, the most common two we'll be talking about. Company registration number for a company, date of incorporation for a company, full name and date of birth for you, the sole trader, national insurance number or tax identifier, which might be a UTR, for the director or the proprietor doing the registration, the person registering the business for that. Contact details, contact details of the business, Estimated value of the taxable turnover for the next 12 months. That can be quite an estimate. It's the next 12 months. How could you possibly know? Details of all associated businesses within the last two years. So if you run other businesses, companies or not companies, you need to know about those because that groups those together. Most of that is what they say you need to know. And then here's the list of extra things I had to write down when I was going through the applications. Director's full name and date of birth for a company. Self-assessment UTR, you don't need that, but they might ask you for it. You'll know what it is if you have one. Director's home address. Director's previous addresses if you've lived at that home address for fewer than three years. Director's email. Director's phone number. Company registered name, company trading name if those two are different. Whether in the past 12 months or the next 30 days taxable turnover has exceeded or will exceed the VAT registration threshold. That's relevant for when you're being forced to register for VAT because of that threshold being reached, but you can voluntarily register when you're below that threshold. So the answer might be no, but still you want to register. Whether in the past the director expected to exceed in a coming 30 day period, the VAT registration threshold. Some weird tenses going on there. I don't know why they're asking that. The date from which the business will be registered. That can be in the past. A 250 character business description, maximum 250, it doesn't need to be 250. The SIC description, go search for the full SIC list. It's a list of codes for different business types. Um, find the ones that are one or two or three that are most close to what you do. A lot of modern businesses do things which are not on that list. It's an old fashioned list, but find the closest thing for you. Zero rated supplies estimate. Do you supply anything which is zero rated for VAT? Google zero rated for VAT to find out. Whether the business will buy, sell goods, services within the EU, whether the business will import or export goods outside the EU. For general registration, just tick no and then you can still do those things, but that's not your main business. Whether the business wants to apply for the flat rate scheme, probably no nowadays, it's got a lot less beneficial than it used to be. Whether the business wants to apply for annual accounting scheme, probably no, but that's my personal choice, some people like it. Business bank name, which must be registered to the company, but if you haven't, with the account name and the, the account number and the sort code, but if you haven't yet set up a business bank account, you can tick that you haven't yet set one up and then add it in later. But if you do have one, get those details ready. And any preference for the quarterly end date, which I'll mention again later, but I have a whole separate video on VAT quarters. So if you're not sure what VAT quarter to choose, go look at that whole video. It explains the pros and cons of all the different VAT quarters. Um, if you're in a rush, pick VAT quarters that line up with your accounting year. Whatever your year is for your business, make sure your VAT quarters fit inside that year. Right, God, what a rush. 
like I say, this is a whole list of information, I'd just rather you got it already first, instead of getting halfway through an application and the application timing out. Parts of this application you can save and come back to later, but parts of it you can't. So let's get all that information ready first. Watch that blurb lots of times, quickly, until you've got everything in it. Most of it's for companies, so if you're running a sole trader business, it's less important. Okay, part one, I suppose part zero is get all that information ready. Part one, get logged in. If you have an HMRC login, go use it. It'll be a 12 digit user ID, user ID is their term, and a password that you've created. Get logged in, get to the bit where it talks about your taxes. Uh, if you don't have one, then you'll need to create one. You may be in a position where you've got one but you've forgotten the password and you can do a password reset thing, that kind of stuff. You know how passwords work on the internet. Um, if you don't have one, then you'll need to create one and following the links to register for VAT will usually take you to a, like, you know, just Google it and go to the .gov website set talking about that registration. will take you to a fork at one point where it says, click here if you don't have a government gateway login. Government gateway is their other term for this type of login. If you don't have a government gateway login, click here to create one from which you will then be able to do your VAT registration. So if you don't have one, make one. If you do have one, use it. Make sure it's for the business, which is registering for VAT. I'm, I'm pointing at you a lot today, sorry. Rude. Make sure it's for the business that is going to be registered for VAT. If it's a company, make sure you're logged in as the company, not you. They're sometimes not clear. They'll say, hi, Benedict at the top. It's a company I'm logged in as. And then when I log in as me, hi, Benedict at the top. Thanks. Make sure you're logged in as the company. If it's a sole trader, then you only have the one account. Make sure you're logged in, except you might not only have one account. Personally, I have more than one Government Gateway account because when I renewed my driving license, it set me up a new Government Gateway account. It didn't say, do you have one already? It just set me up a new one. So now I've got one for my driving license and one for my self-assessment, and then the company's got one. Make sure you use the one for the business, which is going to be VAT registered. Okay, applying for registration. I'm not going to be cutting to screen grabs and showing you this stuff. That's a great way to do it, but the screens you go through will change often, so I want to give you the principles about applying so that when the screens change, this video doesn't become useless. And also, I want you to be able to minimize this in the background and hear me talking while you're, you've got the full screen open and you're applying. Hopefully that will work. The main thing you need to know is what the color teal looks like. If you don't know what teal looks like, T-E-A-L, Google it. If you still live in a world of 16 colors like an old CGA monitor, Google what teal looks like because I will keep talking about teal pages and I know a few people out there are going to be annoyed at me for saying it. So Google teal first, we need that word in our vocabulary. The reason is that when you log in nowadays to HMRC, the government gateway, government gateway does other, th other things like DVLA, but the HMRC bit, the government gateway, you will be presented with modern looking web pages that are lots of white space, large black text, quite clear, you can tell their modern style. Think of this as the reception of the virtual building you're going through. You're gonna to have to do some stuff in this reception to get further into the building. When you're further in the building, things will be smaller, cramped, more old fashioned, and there will be teal around the edges, teal colors around the edges. Those are the back end pages of HMRC, the older pages of HMRC. And those are still where the VAT registration is handled. So you will need to know that you've answered the right questions to get into those back pages. Once you're in there, They'll be asking you the same questions again because it's like moving to a different person in a different part of the office. They'll ask you stuff you've already answered. Don't be confused by that. You haven't gone wrong. You're just talking to a virtually a different person in the teal offices, okay? So watch out for that distinction. Now, when I looked today on those bright, spacious black and white pages, having immediately logged in as my business, the exact link to click on was get online access to a tax duty or scheme but previously it had said, get another tax duty or scheme. And before that it had said, register for HMRC taxes. By the time you watch this video, it might have changed again. Something like that, new tax thing, link, click. That's what you want to click on to get started. Now, I'm gonna pick my computer up again and go through exactly what it asked me in these black and white, large print, nice modern pages. What you have to say to the receptionist to get into the back office. So it asked me what tax I wanted to add. You click on the VAT option, that's what we're here for. It asked me what VAT service do you want to add? And you click VAT. There are other options which are a bit weirder, but the plain one, the VAT one. Do you have a VAT number? No, this means that you're, uh, you are new to this. You want to register for VAT. You're not just trying to get the online service activated for a previous VAT registration. You don't have a VAT number. And then it gives you a little explanation of the process. 
fat registration process. Check if you can register for VAT using the but Anyway, it gives you a little explanation. You click start VAT registration process. What have you been doing so far? You'll be asked up to, it says you'll be asked up to six questions, which you need to answer to get past the receptionist and into the main office. So as of today, those questions were VAT registration exemption. No, agricultural, agricultural flat rate. No, that's not you. Is a company part of a division? No. EU business distance selling to the UK? No, and that's probably going to get changed with Brexit. Acquired goods worth more than £85,000 from an EU company? No, I hope not. Get an accountant if you've done that. 8th or 13th directive? Let's say no. And that got me to, you can register for VAT online. Based on your answers, you can register using the online service. Great. Click continue to VAT registration and you're through, you're in the teal pages, smaller, more crowded, stuff on the left, teal. Now, don't be surprised, I've said this before, don't be surprised when you are asked the same information again. Think of it as if you have virtually moved through to a different, rece different receptionist, different staff member in a different part of the building. They're gonna ask you the same questions again. Sorry. So again, reading from my computer, here's what I ticked to speed through that inside the teal pages. Register for HMRC taxes, you tick the VAT box and click next. Choose the type of body, sole proprietor means sole trader, means self-employment. Corporate body is limited company, you know, a normal company. Those are the two most likely ones. Again, like you're logged in as this business. They should know this, but they don't. They just ask you again. They give you a whole quote about um, indicating the reasons for the application, select an option from bel for below. They give you a bunch of options. Making or intending to make taxable supplies is the is the one you want that means means you're in business and you want to register for that because you're in business it doesn't explain that you know the subtle reasons why you might want to register for that i have a video on the pros and cons of vat registration it's not asking that it just means like that's the normal one then there are other weirder reasons why you might register for that and having answered those questions you should get to something that looks kind of like an application like you'll be shown sections of an application and as you work through them, they'll get ticks next to them. It's Think of them as pages on an application form. So you've gone into the Teal office, you've spoken to another person, they've exp I've asked you some questions, which you've already answered previously, but they've asked you some questions. Based on those questions, they've given you the right application form, and now it's your job to fill it in. You'll be filling in a lot of the same answers again, because why do something once when you could do it three times? You should also be given a list of the things you need to know. I sped through that list and a lot more things that they will actually be asking you earlier on. Their list, I think, is incomplete, but do skim it in case there's anything I didn't mention that you haven't got ready. They may have added a new thing that you need to know. You know, these things are changing all the time. So do check that list. And at this point, having got you your login details to get in the door, having got you past the receptionist, and having given you the answers to talk to the second employee in the teal rooms in the crowded back end of the office, I've got to kind of trust you to fill in that form by yourself because it's only asking things that you know. I can't help you with most of it. I've got a couple of tips about some of the weirder questions, but generally it's going to be a lot of filling in the information that you know and you have ready because you listened to the list I gave you earlier on and got it all ready. One tip is SIC codes. That's redundant. The C in SIC is for the word code, but SIC codes, SIC codes. SIC codes, if you're not going on the flat rate scheme, they don't matter too much. Just get the best guess of an SIC code that describes what your business does. Get that ready and use that one. VAT quarters, I think I mentioned earlier. If you're in a rush, line your VAT quarters up with your accounting year. If you're not in a rush, go watch another video. I'll link it in the description or an end card or something about specifically about VAT quarters, about why you might choose a particular VAT quarter. The date of VAT registration can be a little way in the past. The date of that registration, and it can be in the future, the date of that registration you choose will affect pre-registration costs. Again, I have another video, the one about reclaiming the costs on a laptop or anything else that you bought before you registered for VAT. That can be worth hundreds, perhaps even thousands of pounds to you. And it's based on a period, four years or six months, depending on what you've bought, before you register for VAT. So the date of registration you choose for VAT affects that window and how much stuff you can reclaim. If everything you spent on the business was in the last three months, it's fine, it doesn't matter. But if you spent a lot of stuff on the business five months and 30 days ago, your VAT registration date will matter. So if it's going to matter, go watch that other video about pre-registration costs before you choose your VAT registration date.
if you choose a date in the past and you've issued invoices or even given quotes to people, everything since that date needs to have VAT, which means you're going to need to reissue invoices with VAT. If it's to another business and they're happy to pay and reclaim VAT, then try reissuing the invoice apologetically with 20% added on for VAT. But if they complain and say, no, that's not the price we're paying, or if it's to a a uh, non-business to a real person who doesn't get to reclaim VAT, they're not going to want to pay 120%. They've paid the price or they've already been issued the invoice. In which case, you're going to be reissuing an invoice with VAT but with the same total. So one sixth of what you've already charged will become VAT and you'll be sending that to HMRC and that's going to cost you some money. So pointing back to the past, doing a past re registration date, can cost you a little bit of profit. Be careful about that. Other than that, you should know all the answers to the questions they're asking you. So complete the application, save any codes, acknowledgement, references, whatever they call them, save those codes, email them to yourself, get to the point where they say your application is complete. And then you'll be waiting for them to write to you, unless they've updated it and made it emails, to write to you with a VAT registration code. Well, well done for applying for VAT. You need to start charging VAT. In fact, you need to do it from the VAT registration date. If that's in the future, don't charge yet. If that's in the past, go and reissue your previous invoices. You need to be collecting and giving to HMRC VAT from the date of your VAT registration, even if you don't have your VAT reg code yet in the post. As I said before, if you have to go back and reissue invoices, then customers may not want to pay the extra amount. If they are themselves VAT registered, it won't hurt them because they'll be able to reclaim, but they could still kick up a fuss about it just for the inconvenience. And if they're not VAT registered, if they're people or unregistered businesses, then they don't want to pay an extra 20%, in which case you're just going to have to suck it up. You've already charged them for that service. It's just that charge now includes one sixth of it is VAT. So you're going to lose a sixth of your income just on those already issued invoices. For invoices you're issuing now and in the future, and before you get your VAT registration number, you have to put your VAT registration number on your VAT invoices. But you don't have it yet, but you have to start charging. So start issuing invoices that just say VAT pending, we'll give you a second, a proper invoice when we have a VAT number. And most people won't even notice that because they don't really look at the VAT number. And if they do, they might say, we're not gonna pay until you give us the proper VAT invoice. So that might delay your income a little bit, sorry. Um, but most people will just pay you as normal and then you just send them a second invoice and make and say that it's if they've already paid it, say that it's already been paid. So it's just an update. Don't make them pay you twice because you sent them two invoices. That will annoy your customers and you'll forget about it and then have to give them lots of money back in the future. So be careful. Just on this transition bit, be careful. Well, that got a bit longer and more complicated than I was expecting. This process always ends up taking longer than I expect. Whenever a client goes through it, I always think, it's just details you already know. It's going to take 10 minutes and it's never done in less than an hour. So I guess explaining it is going to take a long time as well. Sorry for the long video, but hopefully this helps you get registered with VAT a little less painfully. If you have found the video useful, please click like so that other people see the video when they need to see it. That's how that works. That will be helpful for other people, for me, for anyone who needs to know how to register for VAT. Do subscribe if you want to know more about tax and business and all the things I talk about here or if you want to ask me for a particular piece of advice in a future video, put it in the comments underneath. If I didn't explain anything, if any of this has changed, put it in the comments underneath. I have a couple of other videos about VAT that might be of use to you. Uh, they will be in links in the description. Possibly they'll appear in end cards here that you can click on. Um, choosing your VAT quarters may affect you. Pre-registration costs, that's the one about uh, claiming VAT for a laptop that you've already bought. A lot of people buy a laptop as they're starting a business and then register for VAT. How do you go back and claim the VAT on that expensive piece of equipment? So pre-registration VAT, go look at the laptop one. If you need to know whether you should be registering for VAT, pros and cons of VAT, that's what that video is for. Go watch the pros and cons of VAT registration. I do a new video every week. Let me know in the comments what you want that video to be about. And thanks for watching.